From the Journal of Snifford of Ausbrush. It was suddenly very quiet in the caldera, even as Themis flew away on her clockwork dragon with Ser Hesk in tow. I truly believe he will be whole and itching to get back into the fight when we track him down, but that does not make the sight of our failure any easier. Our missing friend is a pressing reminder that the five of us are still only a small part of this world. The lost children were alive, thankfully, though hollow, drained to power the dragon. It is easy to replace a gear or a piston. When the soul is damaged, that is beyond me to fix. We took what we could from Themis's hut, including a map that will hopefully lead us to Hesk, and set off for Neomeris' grotto. Hesk would not want us to wallow in despair. But Hesk isn't here. So I must step up and put my mind to the task at hand instead. everyone and welcome back to the Jester's Court. My name is Casey Reardon and I am your Dungeon Master and joining me today as always we have Rachel Cordell. Playing Artemis Alwyn Croft. Thank you. <laughs> nice. Alright, you're welcome. Ooh, nice. I guess. <laughs> Good stuff. We have Sky Swanson. Brother Dead Man Flying Hesk. <laughs> nice. Nice. <laughs> nice. That's good. That's good. good. That was good, yeah. This is the first time for everything, guys. <laughs> <laughs> the first time is from being a good. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have Seth Covey. And I play Barnabas Fletch, the teenage wizard heartthrob. Nice, 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 nice. Good. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know what that looks like. covered all of our reactions yes, for Yes, yes. Oh, great. Yeah. I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Less work oh, for that, me. That thank saves you. a lot of time. It does. Was I good or nice? You were uh, nice. I give nice. you a woo. <laughs> I, uh, I couldn't account for that. Oh. I miscalculated. The woo man himself, Andrew Frost. Hey, I play Leo. Just the one name, like Rihanna. <laughs> nice! The, the woo man. <laughs> <laughs> Seth, get that guy out of your studio. <laughs> get that oh, guy sorry. out of here. <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> and of course, we have Jonas Tintinzer. Sniffer of Housebrush, the volcano venturing mayor of mystery. Nice, 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 nice. Oh, oh nice. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, boy. I miss those halcyon days where Casey would just always fuck up Jonas's I name. I know, it's a new era. I know, <laughs> right? It feels different. It feels and like so we over, went away. We've been doing and this for over a year now, we, guys. We, we Come on. Away I have, we if I didn't get it after God. a year. This is the post-time skip arc of the anime. Has it really been a year? It's been over a it's year, my friend. friend. Yeah. Uh, well, we had to have an arc of Jonas DMing and saying their own name. Tiny. And even then, Casey almost right. screwed up <laughs> coming back. That was the that was the like movie filler episode arc. I gotta I gotta go to Casey and just whack him in the back of the head until he forgets again. And then we can have the joke back again. You can just good. make your way over to my closet because we're recording this in the same room, right? Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna walk yeah. around the table and hit you in the back of the head. There we go. Great. <laughs> Anywho, we are making our way back to the backstage crew here uh, to bring the children back to Bark, uh, Polyferna, and Neomeris. Uh, and as you're walking through the woods, we established last week that your companion, Cedric, is no longer with you. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, we did note that. I... Uh... I uh, neglected to do this at the time, but I would like to take out the little piece of copper wire from my hair. My accent has gone into a strange place. And I would just, <laughs> just as we're walking, because I, I don't think there's much point to staying in place and doing it, but like as we're walking, I'll just constantly be like turning it around and pointing uh, and casting message for Cedric and just saying, Cedric, hello, which is 120 feet. Okay, so as you're walking, you're casting message, trying to find Cedric, but... As you do so, you get 
no response. Whoa, that... It feels like the message isn't going through, mm. not reaching its destination. Cedric seems to be gone. Cedric's dead. So, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I he he Long probably live Cedric. He probably moved faster through the forest than we do, but I I'm not sure where he could have gotten to. Uh, I don't suppose anyone saw him leave during the fight. Nope. No, I didn't no. see anything. I did not keep tabs on the small mouse mm. when there was a big mechanical dragon. More bad news for the nymph, I suppose. Hmm. Was my lizard left behind? What happened? Oh, no, no, he's definitely still with you. Oh, okay. good. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, both hests are gone. I was be I was about to be very concerned for a second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so uh, as you guys start continue walking through the woods here. I need somebody to make me a survival check. Oh, I got it. Ooh, me. Forward. Got it. <laughs> Not you, Sky. <laughs> uh, I did it. I've already done it. Ha ha ha. Perfect. Well. Perfect survival. Yeah, that's, that's pretty a, nice. I get to just kind of like hang back this session. It's pretty great. <laughs> Grip it and rip it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> what was that, Seth? Uh, it's 15. Okay. With a 15, you manage to start navigating your way through the woods, and you have a pretty strong feeling that you are headed in the right direction back to Neomaris. But as you're walking... Yeah, nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Before you make your way on to the main path where you initially encountered uh, Cedric, you hear footsteps <laughs> kind of quickly making their way through the forest in your direction. Oh, uh, I, I... Hide behind a tree, and in, and encourage uh, the rest roll. of the group to do that. Yeah, I'll make a stealth throw. Yes. Can, ah. can I roll to pick up on what the footsteps might sound like from like a nature perspective? Sure, you can roll me a perception check. A perception check. That's even better than my nature. Ha ha. Uh, I rolled a <laughs> I rolled a ten. A ten stealth. Okay. Yes. Eighteen. Whatever's coming this way is most likely bipedal and of medium size. Oh, all right. I would also like to hide. <laughs> Go ahead and roll stealth. It's a giant bird. They're going to kill us. <laughs> oh, the bird is back. <laughs> it's an ostrich. 16. 16, okay. I think Snurford is basically like so tapped out that she's like, I don't have the energy to deal with this if this is a fight, so I'm just going to stand here. <laughs> no, you wanna, do you want to like trot? I'm Where going to, I am, I'm so it's to, like, I'm already behind too small of a sapling. <laughs> I didn't know there's a horse. I'm going to meander, yeah, I'm just going to meander so that, like, my, my, the human part, like, the front half of my body is, is kind of behind a tree, but my horse flank is still completely sticking out. <laughs> Lovely. Ah, a random horse in this, in this forest. And what about you, Leo? Uh, I'm going to ready my sword. Okay. You pull out your sword, and then suddenly bursting out of the brush... Sky, would you please describe your character? Whoa! Oh, as my, what? Uh, as you guys see a halfling with a shock of red hair, he's pale. He's got freckles going up and down his face. You also see there's like twigs and leaves and there's mud over like half of his uh, white like ruffled blouse that he's wearing right now. And then he has uh, trousers on as well. He's missing a shoe. Um <laughs> At one side, he has a, a rapier uh, tucked in his belt. And under his other arm, he has like six apples with him. And you see he's just like <laughs> taking off, like running through the woods. He goes, no, 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 no. Uh, and he just barrels. Um, who said that? Did someone not like get out of the way? Uh, Leo's Leo. still there. Leo, he just crashes straight into Leo then. Um... And, uh, the apples go flying, like everything. He's... He just falls over and like rolls away and then just bonks into a tree, legs up in the air, head on the ground, just completely upside down. Oh. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Par for the you, course, uh, really? You, you gave that, bud? And he's, like, he gets up, he like jumps up, he, <laughs> you know, like that quickly, like, huh, and he just like looks around and goes, Where's the tree? All around you? I mean, is there a specific one? He goes, he sees the apples on the ground, he starts picking them up real fast. Uh, I come out from behind my tree and I'm like, what tree? The one that was following me. The one that uh, they made the big noises and everything. It was scary. Oh, I guess you meant Bark. Not to mm. be confused with Back. I don't know. Bark is smaller than him, though. Bark is a stump. I would not describe Bark is a medium-sized creature. 
Bark is a pretty big stump, but I still would not describe <laughs> it as a tree. I think at this point, my guy, uh, he scoops back up the apples, uh, and then he goes and he quickly ducks behind uh, Snowfred and Barnabas, also oh, hiding behind the tree. Hello. How, yeah. how... And as you hide behind them, <laughs> from the trees steps out another tree, yeah. a moving, walking tree tree end Ooh. makes its way through the forest into this small little area where you guys are and it it looks around i'm going to go ahead and make a perception roll for it <laughs> should i make a <laughs> should i make a, a stealth yeah, you check can make with a stealth disadvantage check. sure i i will say with disadvantage if you want to impose that, that at, on yourself that is fine <laughs> yeah i'm going to impose i think it's funnier okay uh 15 and a 9 <laughs> Okay, well, I rolled a 22. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, that's so fun. Ten, this ten tree end just looks at all of you and then clearly sees Sky's character fully just underneath the horse part of Snowfred, just not even really hiding behind any of the legs. And it just <laughs> looks, it points a leafy branch in your direction and says, Give me back my apples. You have so many of them. You do not need all of them. Yeah, but you like, give them back. What are you doing? Take my I'm hungry. Apples. I've been... <laughs> and it shakes its branches. We we will look. Does it drop more apples? <clears throat> uh, no, the apples stay tightly in the branches. Gotcha. Okay, I wanted to make sure though. Uh, I'm small, um, redheaded one. We've been through a lot today, and. Uh, frankly, we don't want to get between you and this uh, tree uh, fellow. So I would prefer it if you would get in the way of right. me and the tree fellow. Here. So what if you give the tree back their apples and then we will feed you of our own accord? Uh, he like hops back up again. He's like, punk. He gets back up. He's holding the apples and he's like, I'll give you back four apples. All of the apples. Okay. Okay. All of them. Six apples. That's all of them, right? Yeah. He tucks yeah. one apple behind his back. <laughs> uh, I thought I'm going to make another perception check to see that. <laughs> if you want to make a sleight of hand. I'll do sleight of hand. <laughs> do I even have it? Oh, I have expertise in that. Uh, 25. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't notice. Uh, yeah. It sees that you have six apples mm -hmm. on you. It says, yes. All six of the apples. All right, he uh, he goes for it. He tosses all six of them back and where they plucked them from in the tree. And it just grabs it with each, like a couple of different branches. It snags all the apples out of the air and just kind of looks over all of you. And just all of the kids who are just staring deadpan into the forest and just says... Thank you. <laughs> and wanders back off into the forest. Goodbye. That yeah, guy was yeah, not that, that cordial a second ago. He hey, was what's your a name? Bunch what? of horrible stuff. What's your name, buddy? Actually, that's a good question. Uh, what is your name? What I'm gonna let the tree you? respond first. <laughs> Craig. Craig. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Oh, I Greg thought they the said Brag. Watch out, folks. Greg will be coming back. <laughs> um, uh, Artemis, uh, I mean, I don't know your name yet, but uh, you you turn to me, you ask me. Uh, Renaud turns to you, gives like a, a deep bow with a bit of a flourish to him, uh, kind of like stumbles forward a little bit and then like uh, writes himself back up and he goes, Renaud Duquesne de la Matou. It is uh, very oh. nice to meet you all. Oh, no, he's French. Wow, that's a lot of names. <laughs> I only uh, got one. Uh, pleasure. Uh, Artemis Owen Croft. And she gives her hand to you to shake it. Uh, he shakes it back immediately, like both hands, like really, really fervently. Like, I have not seen people in like over 12 hours. So it is great to see someone. <laughs> so uh, why are you in the Magic's Forest exactly? Well, I was at the party, you know, the big one going into town, when uh, yeah. a couple of satyrs said, uh, you know, they wanted to show me something in the woods. And uh, they, they brought me into the woods, and, uh, well, um, they just kind of beat the crap out of me. Uh, <laughs> ah, you know what? That tracks. Oh. That tracks. Yeah, yeah. Did, um, did, did, you, uh, did you steal something from them? No. Mm, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll. He uh, flips the apple from behind him, catches it, and starts eating it. <laughs> I'm going to roll insight on Raynal. <laughs> okay. Sure. 
All right. That's a that's a fifteen. Um he didn't steal anything. <laughs> um I I think you're lying. No. No, I would not lie to you, a child. Okay, well you shouldn't lie to anyone at all. Especially children. Uh, but, he I, turns, mean, he turns, I mean he turns to Snowford now and he's just like, uh, you mentioned some food? Yeah, yeah. I just started going through my like Snurfords just completely dumbfounded. Just start going through my saddlebags. I pull out like some some rations, like some jerky, and and hand it over. You oh, know, with a few more ingredients, I could even cook you a nice meal. That's great. We are going somewhere where there could be more ingredients, and uh, oh. we should we should really get moving. Actually, we have places to be and people to save. You know how it is. Yes. No, I, I don't know about the saving people, but I would love to tag along with you for now and get out of these damnable woods. I like. I gesture to the six children. We're not going to leave the woods for a bit. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we're we will leave eventually if you'd like to help us. Uh, in the meantime. Well, it is uh, better than trying to figure out my own way out of here. So sure, I will join you. Have you ever fought uh, a big robot dragon before? No, I have never fought a robot, nor dragon, nor the two combined. It's okay. There's no resume for this trip. Let's uh, let's go. Well, I'm oh, just, just curious. I mean, die. I just curious if that's like an experience you might be interested in. <laughs> that's uh. fair. That is fair. <laughs> can I? Can I ask me after I have eight? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Can I roll investigation that's that's on this fair. person? Sure. Uh, what are you trying to find out? You're, gonna, you're gonna pat him down. <laughs> I'm gonna circle them. Uh, with a speculating eye, and uh, and by speculate, I mean I'm going to squint. I, I, uh, I want to run their prints back at the crime lab. Yeah, I'm gonna take a <laughs> take a few DNA samples and give them to Matrix. Crack it, crack it away in crack my backpack. Wide open. Uh, that's a natural twenty. Uh, <laughs> so all of your lies and really flaws are laid bare before me, God of Sight. <laughs> you in, you unzipped them. You so um, with this investigation, Sky, you can tell him basically all the stuff that is clearly visible on you and just your general demeanor, I guess, at the moment. Your social security number. Yeah. Um, Rele- <laughs> release a, uh, a, a a truth that Reynald would keep quiet. No, I think, I think there's definitely something here. Um, you, I, I already described basically everything on him. He truly only has, like, his sword and, like, a little bag that might be, you know, might have had some coins in it that he somehow kept hidden while he was being mugged. Uh, and, like, a few various other, you know, just, like, small stuff. But really, it's just, like, him in his clothes missing one shoe. Uh, and he just kind of wants to get out of there right now. You do yeah. notice as as we're like walking along now, every once in a while, it's almost impossible to see it. There's like the lightest of blue haze around him that almost like trails off of him, like a like a reflection of himself. But it's for like a nanosecond. Oh, what's that? What is what? <laughs> what is what do you when you do when you do this? It's not. It's not like a regular blur. It's, oh, a, it's a blooper. And he, he, he takes out a coin and he like flicks it in the air and he like palms it in one end and then like makes it disappear with the other one. He's like, "Oh, it's sleight of hand. You saw me do it with the tree. I was no. trained by no. a traveling band." It. And he stop just it. does not stop talking about the traveling <laughs> band of people for as long. I grab him as by both shoulders. Listen to me, small you are person. a small child and much smaller than me. <laughs> I'm not smaller than you. You're smaller than me. Uh, by, like, three, I got oh, three right, inches on you. <laughs> Um, yeah, he something's does not, not right here. <laughs> he does not acknowledge it at all. He keeps like subverting the conversation, talking about other things. Yeah, he just he will not. Eventually, I release and I throw my hands up and I, like, uh, I'll just start walking and then and I'll turn around and like we're going. <laughs> Renaud falls back to Artemis now because Artemis has been honestly the most friendly. She's like, is he always like that? <laughs> um, inquisitive. Yes, mm, a good word. <laughs> Could you imagine Barnabas as the Grand Inquisitor? In- <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> what man, Jedi? <laughs> I'll get the, you, Obi Wan. The Jedi will hunt themselves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, can we, so can we continue through can, the woods? <laughs> yeah, you continue through the woods, and as you're walking, it almost seems like. The forest itself is trying to bring you back to that grotto where you first met Neomaris. And eventually you do break the tree line into that clearing where the grotto is. 
and you see Neo Maris, and she is a little bit frantic at the moment. She's listing off possible fae that may have been swayed by Themis to Bark and Parafana, who are taking notes. Um, but as you enter in, she kind of looks up and sees all of the children, and she just rushes over to you. Uh, and I'm going to say, who, who's breaking the tree line first? Barnabas? Barnabas? Yeah, Rinald. Yeah, I guess I'm I'm back with Rinald. So, yeah. Uh, she sees you, Barnabas, and rushes over to give you a hug. And she says, oh, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have no idea how much of a relief this is. I, And she kind of pauses for a second and realizes that the children are just kind of staring off into space. She waves a hand in front of them. And she says, what? What happened to them? Soul stones. Bad, bad stuff. Bad stuff, probably. They um, they got soul jacked. They live in the dragon for now. Yeah. We're going to fix like it. That. We're going, we are going to fix it, though. But, uh, you know, we thought get them to a safe place first. Well, number one priority, as you can see, we are a big uh, husky lizard down. Uh, so... That's a that's that's my number one priority. The kids are obviously very high, but you know, if one was to take precedence, uh, it would be uh, my my good friend, uh, baby best friend. I don't know. I've never said that a lot before, but maybe the... <laughs> somewhere in a dragon's mouth, Hesk blushes a little bit. <laughs> it's my character. She she tries to take in everything that you're saying, and she says, "Yes, I." I'm so sorry about your friend, but there's nothing I can do for him right now, but I can I can help them. Quickly, quickly, bring them over to the pool. And okay. she makes her way over to that the pool where the grotto is. I assist. Right. You make your way over to the pool and usher the children in. Neomaris rushes through the water, almost becoming one with it as she moves, gathering up uh, what appear to be soul stones from the grotto. Carefully, she steps up and places one of the stones on a child's chest. Let's say it's Nesseltus. The glow of the stone starts burning brighter as it slowly starts to sink into their body and is absorbed. Then she goes over to the next child and does the same to each one in turn. You wait alongside Bark and Parafana with bated breath for something anything to happen but nothing does and it seems like almost an eternity passes before finally you feel this cool breeze rustling through the trees around you you hear the snapping of twigs behind you as six stags glowing in this almost violet light step out from the brush they seem a little bit larger than a normal stag would with that slightly different hue, kind of like this glowing violet. And each one of them has antlers with eight total points. Silently, they move their way towards the languid youths. And as they get within inches of the children, each one breathes in deeply and then forcibly outward at the chest of the child's, at the chest of the children. After a moment, Nestle Tess blinks, and then Cecil, and the others as well. The deer turn towards near Maris, giving a slight nod, and then they slowly and silently walk back into the woods. Eh? What? What was that? That was very strange. I, you all are an interesting group. Was that magic? Uh, Neo Maris kind of is looking a little stunned and says, Um, yes. It it was, that that the the magic the magic. Magic. Well, yes, you've you've been encountering her this entire time. Uh, people outside often say that the the forest is her prison, but she is the forest. So she's also Craig. <laughs> yes, she is also Craig. Not. Exactly, but she's a part of everything in this forest. Oh, okay. See, uh, for the children, did 
are are was that their souls? Are they okay? Do they look like they're like fine now? Like are they just like like what's they, going on with them? They are more responsive. They are blinking. They're looking around, but they seem extremely confused. Yeah. And as you ask that question of Neomaris, she says, "No, no, it it's not their soul. It's just a patch." On their soul. Um, unless I have their actual soul, the piece that's missing from them, they won't be exactly the same, but the stones can at least fill that emptiness, if not with what was once there. Hmm. Uh, Barnabas just kind of like gazes in wonder and kind of like looks around the forest. A new... In a new perspective, and also terrifying, uh, because those kids are so far from okay. That just sounds awful. Yeah, I, I guess like I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I understand what's happening. So, from what we understand, part of their soul was removed, or is it like the energy of the soul was removed? Like, so what you recall from your encounter with Themis? You recall the fact that Themis said that it wasn't ready before activating the dragon, which leads you to believe that it wasn't able to fully siphon off the souls of the children uh, to power this the, the clockwork dragon. Okay. So only a piece of their soul is missing. Not, not necessarily the energy, but a, a piece of the soul itself. Okay. Okay. Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> not it's, the word I would use to describe it, but sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's cool to like, like, okay, like affirmative. I, I have better understanding now. <laughs> it's cool. Right. It's cool it story, a lot bro. less terrible than the cool, alternative. Cool story, bro. Oh, so <laughs> Neo Maris, uh, Bark, and Parafon are, are all helping the kids up out of the water. And Neo Maris looks to you and says, I'm truly sorry about your friend, but you have all done myself and magic and these children such an amazing service, and I would like to grant you each a blessing for what you have done for us Ooh. here today. Yes, thank you. I mean, that is, you don't have I like, to. I like look at... Uh... <laughs> Fuck, what's your name again? Ronald. 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 I look, I'm sorry. I look at Ronald and I'm just like, Dude, what the hell? <laughs> but I, I don't say anything because I'm like, <laughs> sure, why not? Just that Ronald does shame. not, despite us being at like eye level, does not make eye contact with you. <laughs> um, <laughs> She's like, yeah. Yeah, it's very one sided. <laughs> yeah. That is very kind of you, Neomaris, but we're we're only trying to do the right thing. You don't have I to. I understand, but if Themis does have your friend, then I would like to impart some of Magic's power onto you so that. You may try and get him back. Yeah, no, that that sounds pretty applied, and like, if I, it, I think that makes perfect sense. If it's not too much trouble, yeah, we 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 pretty um we got whacked by that dragon pretty bad. Yeah, this would have been helpful, you know, when we went to go do it initially. But hey, I guess hindsight's twenty twenty. Well, know? we didn't know about the dragon then. I, yeah, well, no, but you know, sending just you know some guys you just met in the woods into you know fighting your. Your evil pal. I mean, I feel yeah. like there'd be a little bit more setup for that. You but were the hey, one what who do asked I know? To help. I was going to do it myself, and then Even you the said that you needed for... to help. Oh, uh, I think the important thing is that now we all are going to get a reward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, who is your friend yeah. here? Yes, I was they... there the whole time. Yeah, um, Renald. Our friend is named Renald. Renald Duquesne de la Matou. <laughs> he goes for. Yeah. He like extends out a hand for them to shake. He's uh, reaches to shake your hand. He shakes it fervently. <laughs> He's a soon to be acquired taste, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the way that these blessings are going to work is this is actually a mechanic in the game. Uh, it is in Ooh. the other rewards section of the DMG. Whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> Shit a bit. <laughs> Whoa, this is awesome. All right, so of the choices here, we're going to go down the list to to let the audience know what you all chose. So Woo. let's go ahead and start with uh, Artemis. Wow. Uh, I picked the Blessing of Understanding, 
which ups my uh, wisdom score by two, making it now 21. Excellent. And for you, Leo. Uh, I'm going to take the blessing of wound closure. Whenever I'm dying at the start of my turn, as is common with Leo, I stabilize. <laughs> and then in Excellent. addition to that, whenever I get to roll hit dice to regain hit points, I double the number. Whoa, that's which amazing. Is spicy. So you, can you just never die from bleeding out now? I guess not. That's incredible. Uh, Barnabas, what did you take? I took the blessing of protection. You gain a plus one bonus to AC and saving throws. It's really vanilla, but I love it because no one hurts my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Stay away from my boy. <laughs> Stay away from my boy. Snowford, what did you take? Uh, I think the blessing of protection is maybe the tactical choice, but just because I've rolled so badly on hit points this game, I'm going to take the blessing of health. <laughs> take that. And, and yeah. boost, boost my constitution. Like, I think, I think they kind of... As a blade singer, my AC is pretty solid, but I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make up for lost time. <laughs> yeah. All right. And Ronald Duquesne. Ronald Duquesne uh, takes uh, the blessing of protection as well, so we get that plus one bonus to AC and saving throws. Cause nobody Excellent. touches my boy. <laughs> Soon to be the uh, the favorite. <laughs> uh, Going for another home run here, guys. Yeah, there's just some, some really cool ones here. I I don't know. So. Mia Mernis goes up to each of you and places a hand on your shoulder. And you just feel this rush of energy. Those of you who are casters get this sense of magic's presence. You have felt it when you cast spells. You feel it when you reach to the weave. Barnabas, you felt it when you called out to magic. And it just is this warm tempest almost within you as you gain these blessings. Nice. And Neomaris looks oh. to you all and says, I hope that this will be enough. It's all I can give. Yeah, I hope so too. I sh feel healthy as a horse. Ha ha ha! <laughs> That's like a little acorn guy that comes out and he just <laughs> points and laughs. laughs. Good one! <laughs> Renaud would absolutely die laughing at that. <laughs> Perfect. All right, make a new character, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> two for two. Please feel free to rest here if you need. You look in rough shape. Oh, yeah, we need. We can take the children back to town if you like. I don't know if they would want to spend any more time here. Should, should they go back? Yeah, I had that thought as well. Would we be able to... Return the part that they're missing? Yeah, does killing the dragon just automatically return to sender? I don't have enough information about this creature to, to know how it works. I just feel I just feel returning them now like what? Give them back to their parents and complete and then be like, Oh wait, we've made a mistake. Yeah, well, I I had that thought as well. I think keeping them here would um prolong the parents distress but i don't know what kind of new distress it would cause to send them back in this form so it is i don't truly feel that it is our decision to make but perhaps we rest the night and see about finding hesk and call it an extra day and then maybe we can send them back if we don't have it by then i, I feel that is the best compromise of our conflicting hopes here i agree we can house them here for for now if you like yeah we, we will we will rest and um re recollect and then once we are done resting we will go looking for hesk and for the dragon and if we if we don't come back soon or if if we do and we have not done it yet then we should we should send them back to town with perhaps some missive stating that the problem will be fixed <laughs> <laughs> Little, just like, a little, <laughs> pin a little yeah. note to their collars. Yeah. Open it up. <laughs> we'll just so we don't have to soul. have that conversation. <laughs> yeah. I owe you one child soul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to reach you about your child's misplaced soul. <laughs> <laughs> Disclaimer oh. about your child. They're uh, missing a piece of their soul. <laughs> so the plan is get out of Dodge, basically? Yeah. Well, well, I don't know what you mean by get out of Dodge. It's kind of go straight toward Dodge. Yeah, be that is towards. true. But leave magic spores. No. 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 
we're looking for Themis and the dragon, and they're still here as far as we know. Uh, mm, yeah. They crap. went deep. You do remember deep, that Themis but... broke what was binding her to the forest. Ah. Uh, but, but she they, didn't. They flew uh, deeper, right? As I mean, far as I, relative like. Relative term. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I mean. Like It's like we don't have a basis for looking other than uh, than somewhere in the forest, or if we can, I guess we go back and try to decipher the map that might give I us mean, a lead. You know, I'm new to the group. Hello, everyone. Uh, and I don't have much stake in what's going on with all of you, but I am currently homeless, jobless, and uh, don't have a whole lot going on. So I'd, I'd love to help you guys out, at least for now, until I find a better jumping off point. But... Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, you're in the crew. I mean, that's what just skills given. do you oh, have? Oh, that's now? Um, yeah. We we have. I was going to ask that later, check, but or? if I'm just part of the group, like that's even better. Well, yeah, yeah. I uh, don't go that far, buddy. I mean, like, yeah, <laughs> it's just like welcome to be in the group. I mean, like, there's some there's some rituals we got. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not. A couple of initiatives. <laughs> but, uh, but, but uh, anyhow, as I was saying. And, and if you true, you fought a dragon. That is not a, a small or common creature. You might want to just. Ask around and see if anybody saw it flying overhead. I feel like we can just trust the path. Because, it, I mean, our goal is to get to Hesk. And I feel like if we just walked like we wanted to walk towards Neo Maris and company, if we just kept going like that, we would eventually come close to a sign. I mean, maybe not exactly where they are, but not nothing, you know? <laughs> I mean, it's hard because they, they're flying, so they're not in the forest. But you know, we might we might come on to something. I I don't know. There was no path when I was going through those woods, though. It's very annoying. Yeah. Well, you. Yeah. I mean, you're kind of scatterbrained. <laughs> you're you're missing a shoe. Uh, I don't know. Like, oh, when did that deal. happen? I think your whole thing was <laughs> run away from everything, and then everything was the only bit that the forest got. So they just gave you that. <laughs> Look, I just, you know, you pick up an egg, a bird chases you, you pick up some apples, a tree chases you, you pick up a fish, a river chases you in there. It's a very <laughs> bad place, and I, I don't particularly want to go back in there, but oh. uh, seeing how I have anything else to do. Is that why they say rivers run? It was certainly running. <laughs> yeah, just don't go near brooks. Oh, my God. They just keep babbling and babbling, keep babbling and babbling on. and babbling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> dies laughing. I, uh... <laughs> So Truly. I think we are all stressed and tired, and uh, I don't know about all of you, but I am in dire need of a rest to clear my mind. And I... since we are agreed that that is on our short-term agenda, I suggest that we do that and then decide our course of action in the, um, well, I, I guess not morning because the stars are weird, but, you know, the future yeah. period. What's that? I couldn't hear you from the inside of my tent. <laughs> Barnabas you say something? is ahead of me. Okay. Good night, Barnabas. Oh, good night, everyone. Atrix, move over. Oh, you guys can, uh, I'll keep watch if you guys want to. I don't know if we really need to keep watch in this location. I think we can all just sleep. Is that? Are we protected here? I think we are safe in this grove, Leo. You, you I mean, you rest. can watch if you want to, but it's. I, I mean, probably, but yeah, I, I, I might stay up for a bit. Okay. Surely. When all passes out immediately. Oh, I don't have to worry about him. Okay. That's <laughs> they just do that animated <laughs> flop. Maybe <I'll> just, <laughs> yeah, just like straight to a bed and maybe he just like misses the bed and just falls to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Already snoring. Such a loud snore. Perfect. We're resting. Okay. Leo, you're staying up for a little bit. Uh, is there anything that you're doing? Uh, No. Leo, Leo just needs to Sit in silence for a little bit and unwind. I'd like to do a little scene with Leo, if we don't mind. Sure. Of course. Mm. I, I kind of, I set up my sleeping area and I see Leo is, is still up and I kind of, I'm like so tired and my eyes are, are heavy and falling, but I get up and I trot over and I uh, sit down beside him and I don't say anything first. I wait for him to uh, perhaps broach the conversation first. Uh, it, I'd say it takes a little bit, maybe like a couple, maybe five minutes or so spent in silence. We were just poking at a fire. And then finally he breaks the, the silence and just goes, so uh, how you holding up, ghetto? You know, I'm pretty okay. Um, I think I, uh, 
when we when we were down underwater in that spooky city, I was it was pretty low for me. Yeah, me too. And I wasn't really sure I could continue doing um you know this. But um well, Hesk uh, talked to me some, and everyone talked to me some, and we kept going, and and we did it, and we we got out of there okay, and we even saved the big fish monster, and that's true. I thought maybe maybe I am cut out for this. Oh, I mean, you, you definitely are. I mean, let's be honest, you you've been doing some crazy stuff. Yeah, it's kind of like a lot of learning on the fly, you know. Try things, see if they work. Yeah, but I mean, you're still able to. I mean, I I can't do that, and I mean. I got all that stuff just in my body already, but can't really do anything with it. Mm, now that is why I wanted to talk to you, actually. Huh? I have a, I have a lot of, you know, I did a lot of studying with my mentor, but not exactly a book learner, and uh, neither am I. Most of it self-taught, and I, I know that you have some more hands-on experience in certain matters. I, it has been a difficult couple of days, Leo, but when my mind is clouded, I like to work and solve problems. And that is how I clear my own way forward. And, um, well, I, I'm hoping maybe we can clear one for you. Well, I, I think I'd like that. I mean, what should I do? Just like Sudokus or something? Or? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually... And I pull out my code sphere and I uh, twist it open and I show Leo the inner workings of it, which I haven't shown anyone else except probably my mentor. And it's just this insanely, intensely complicated little ball of gears and wires and all kinds of strange contraptions on the inside. I think, I think there is something in here that I don't know that is in there and you can help me find it. And perhaps together we can gain a better understanding of this strange technology that is uh, driving so much of our lives right now. I mean, yeah, I'd love to, but I feel like most of my talents are kind of blowing that kind of stuff up. Are, are you sure you want to have me responsible for this? This is this is a lot. Yes, Leo, because I am okay at building, but I need your help to break. And uh, I just kind of pan away up over the stars as we like start tinkering and, and messing with it yeah you work hashtag crew, hoof crew baby a decent hoof, amount hoof, of the night hoof, 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 hoof. hoof crew works a decent way through the night you're tinkering away on the code sphere i think at some point just like like we're, we're, we work on it for a little bit and then I just stufford just falls asleep at one point and leo like <laughs> Maybe doesn't even notice for a little while and is still working and then just looks over and Stafford's just completely like, Oh, without a doubt. He pulls a, an extra blanket out of his pack and, and lays it over. Aww. Yeah, I guess I should sleep too. So, Leo, you continue working on the Code Sphere after Snowfreak goes to sleep and eventually your eyes become so heavy that even you have to put it down and bed down for the night. And it's quiet in the grotto. Until Renald wakes up. Yeah, Renald kind of stirs. Maybe he was asleep. Maybe he wasn't. He was probably asleep. Um, and he just kind of like quietly gets up. Uh, I'm going to roll a stealth check here. Make sure I don't wake up anybody. Incredible. Natural 20. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> For a 26. <laughs> um, so he is so light on his feet. He, crawl, he like tips over. He goes over to basically everyone's bags. And he starts going through them. Maybe we see, like, he pulls out, like, a heavy sack of, like, coins, what obviously, like, any thief would rob. And he just, like, puts that back immediately until he gets to, like, probably, like, Snowfrid's diary. Is there, like, a lock on it or is it just, like, a book with, like, a, a wrap around it? That's a great question. I don't, yeah, I don't think Snowfrid would be paranoid enough to have a lock on it. Okay, then. Um, and, like, as he's going open, he ju you just hear him quietly whisper. Well, no one hears him, but he says it to himself. Like, okay, buddy, let's uh, see who these people really are. Uh, and he, like, opens it up. And just, I think the scene, just, like, him reading it, puts it down, finds another thing. Like, any paper, any sort of, like, who you guys are, mm -hmm. he's examining everything. And then putting it back carefully to make sure that nobody knows he did this. 
He does this for maybe like 20, 30 minutes. I think as you're reading through everything too, every once in a while, that blue silhouette as you're like moving, flipping pages is right there, right behind each one of your movements. I think it does kind of like a like a out of focus kind of shot where it's like him reading, camera moves over and we just see the blue shadow like behind him basically, and then it like cuts away from that to uh you know Ronald going back to sleep. Unless I did, is there anything interesting that I find in people's backs that they want to shout out? I mean, just out of my own curiosity, would my alert feet proc off, or am I considered unconscious at the moment? You are unconscious. But, I mean, it's not a threat of danger. Okay, that's right. Yeah, my guy's not trying to kill you. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, there's just all the, you know, all the weird stuff in the in the journal. There's just all of, like, Snifford has recorded pretty much everything that has happened in the mm-hmm. campaign. So, like, there's a lot of weird shit about obelisks and obelisks and things like that. Yeah, he's just reading like, what the heck is an obelisk? One more thing that Renald finds in my bags, which... Uh, probably doesn't mean anything to him, but it would be curious. There is a a letter, a one page letter written in a flowing script, talking about a lot of weird esoteric magic stuff and mm-hmm. like a brief history of the gods. And then it just ends with the big in big letters. Why did we forget memory? With memory capitalized and uh, a sign with the letter A. Probably the most interesting that Artemis has is uh, star maps on them. I don't know if. Circle star druids are super common, if that would be a point of interest. I don't think he would know what he's looking at. He would just kind of see him be like, just be... weird maps. And he would just yeah, like put them away. Maps, yeah. Here's a question for you, Renald. Do you pick up Atrix? I I mean, I don't think he would know who Atrix is. So a he book. just sees a book, yeah. a book and goes to see what's in the book, like another diary, maybe. Yeah, he I pick... think so. Yeah, he would pick any book, yeah. anything like that. Yeah, he picks up Atrix. Oh, actually, that's so funny. I originally was like, I don't want to get caught because I rolled that natural 20. But yeah, he picks up Atrix. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm like, this is a big book. Yeah, it's a big book in your hands. And you at first, you just kind of feel like this warm air kind of hitting you in the face. Ah. And then you hear it snore and open Whoa. it. <laughs> and as you like go, it opens its eyes and Atrix is like, hey, who are who, I say, who are you? <laughs> he like glanced, uh, Ronald like glanced his head over his mouth and he just like looks around and then just like leaps backwards through an open window outside. <laughs> an open window? <laughs> my my tent window. <laughs> and the windows. Uh, and he's outside with Atrix like, he's like, yeah. shut up, shut up. Keep quiet, 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 quiet. He bites your finger. Ah, fucking, ah, you little bitch. Barnabas, Barnabas. No, no, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> What do you want? <laughs> what? I, you need, why you are have to you want kidnapping me? He's I'm not kidnapp- kidnapping you. I'm not kidnapping you. I was looking for some evening reading, and you freaked me out. Evening? You're going through my boy's personal effects. No, 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 no. See, I can, I, 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 I can see how it looked like that, but I just, you know, I struggled to sleep, and I figured they had a good book on them. Uh, roll me a <laughs> deception check. Yeah, let's do it. That's, <laughs> right, That's good. That's good. Uh, deception. Here we go. Uh, uh, 10 for a 13. I got a 15 on the die. Damn. So close. All right, yeah. You best watch yourself, Renaud Duquesne de la Matou. I, ne- I did not introduce myself to you. I don't like that you know I my name. I always hear what Barnabas <laughs> is. That is very freaking now, okay, maybe we can maybe we can cut a deal, okay? Look, I don't want them. I just met them. I'm just trying to figure out who these people are, if I can trust them or not. Well, you could go about that by asking them rather than rooting through their stuff. If you've seen the things that I have, this is the easier way. Look, mm. there must be something that you want, huh? When no one can get it for you. You don't have hands. Uh, why would so I not gonna get hands? hands? <laughs> Uh, you know, to pick things up. Look, maybe Renault can uh, pick something she up for you. you there. Uh, hey, have you ever wanted to, I don't know, uh, have you ever wanted to drink wine? No, I can't say. Why would I want to get my pages wet? Well, I don't know how a talking Are you book works me? in my defense. <laughs> I'm not trying to. Look, there must be something you want. I mean, we could cut a little deal here. I'm trying to think of what Atrix would want. I know. <laughs> I'm sorry to put you on the spot here. <laughs> I'm just desperately trying to get out of trouble. <laughs> uh, 
So there's there's this thing uh, when when you're trying to learn spells from like other things mm-hmm. that you have to like pay fifty gold, but because of like oh, where man. I kind of am for like sp- like spells and, and and my like class of wizard, uh, it becomes less of a thing, and we also don't really focus on uh making sure that our like little arcane items are are stashed and and stocked all the time so what jonas and i were talking about (laughs) is that i literally have to feed gold coins to atrix (laughs) 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 so they might just want gold (laughs) or or money to eat he's got that prospector voice that's why it all comes yeah oh yeah (laughs) i like it it's like one of those those coin banks with the faces that you just feed (gasps) yep oh no where nom, does the gold nom, go? Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> I need gold, Renal. Okay, I, I have a little <laughs> bit of gold I could give you. Uh, how much? Hmm, how much do you have? Well, uh, you know it'd never be a good deal, but I just told you how much I had, so why don't you tell me how much you need? <laughs> it wouldn't be too much of a good deal if I left this scoundrel amongst my Barnabas. Hmm. <clears throat> Mm. Uh, he uh, he <laughs> goes over to his his uh, his, uh, his little uh, coin purse that he has he had managed to like hide away, um, and <laughs> we never did we never did money. I just sent you a message about it. Am I am I good? Sure. Okay. Yeah. He like I have I have only fifty gold to my name. That would be perfect, my friend. He pulls out the fifty gold. What, how do I give it to you? He opens his mouth. Oh, this is weird. (laughs) He slowly starts, like, dumping the coins into his mouth. Like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. (laughs) And they just kind of disappear as they enter into the other dimension that is Atrix's mouth. Yeah. All right. We're good? For now. Oh, you scoundrel, you. I think I'm going to like you. Does that mean Barnabas What's has like fifty gold credit towards spells? Yeah, I was gonna say he yep. wakes up. Yeah. Oh, I got a new spell in here. <laughs> You're gonna wake up and be able to learn a spell. <laughs> this could be very confusing. <laughs> he uh, carefully puts back Adrix and he uh, goes back to a spot on the ground. Excellent. So as you're all drifting away to sleep, Barnabas, you get this interesting dream. You are in. A forest, very similar to this one that you're in currently. It's daytime. The sun is shining brightly. Birds are chirping. And you look around. And the first thing that you really notice is that on this branch is an owl, which seems a little odd that it would be out during the day. But as you notice it, it turns its head to you. Mm. And flies down and as it gets closer you realize that this is a much larger owl than you were probably anticipating with eight brilliant wings flapping Ooh. down Whoa. that's not an owl that's an angel be not afraid fear <laughs> not <laughs> and it lands in front of you like am I looking up at the owl or are they like eye contact with me eye contact standing on they? the ground but it's still really big Okay. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Hello, Hello Barnabas. Oh, okay, you talk. <laughs> hi, hi. I heard, I heard your, your call. call. Oh, oh my gosh. Whoa. Yeah, I did that. I yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. I don't know if you're a call person, but yeah. <laughs> she kind of chuckles. There's no need to apologize. I uh. I haven't heard another voice in a very long time. Oh, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, It's uh, the the penalty of prison, I I suppose. What are you you searching searching for? for? Uh, At the moment, um, uh, a a path to my my friend. I just just want to make sure they're safe. Unfortunately, my reach does not extend past the forest and... Themis and your friend have left. Okay. They were headed south, from what I could tell. 
Oh, that that's helpful. Thank you. Um, I, I guess my 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 real thing is I I, I just I just want them to be safe. I I want to I want to help these children uh, heal. I I suppose. I want nothing more than that. Do you think that you could help me do? Yeah, of, of course, Magic. I, 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 I would, I would do any great deed in your name. I have a few, not many, disciples in the world. People who use my power directly for me. They are knights of an order, so to speak. Would you wish to become one of them? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, it would be my honor. Please, Please kneel. kneel. Uh, Barnabas kneels. The owl unfurls its massive wings and tilts its head upward. As magic says, by my power, the power of magic and the wing, I would like to knight you, Barnabas Fletch is one of my emissaries, the holy warrior of magic. I would like you to swear that you will use my power to move humanoid kind further forward, never backward. I... I do solemnly swear. Then rise, Barnabas Fletch. I rise. She places a wing on your shoulder and you feel a sensation in your arm uh, as brilliant violet energy seems to be swirling around on your forearm. And suddenly it solidifies in the symbol of magic. Whoa. Go forth, Barnabas. In the name, in the name of, of magic. magic. Thank you. And I, I bow my head in reverence. And as you bow your head, the morning breaks and everyone levels up. Whee! Whoa! Whoa! That was crazy. Whoa! Level up. Seth, I'm, I'm so excited for you to be six levels wizard, one level paladin. <laughs> I can't believe Barnabas just had a heart attack in his sleep. <laughs> I just had a stroke. So, uh, yeah. I was, if I could, if I I could, just, just, if I could just describe all of like our faces, like we were like the Ooh. most silent cheer squad I've ever witnessed. Your freaking <laughs> elbow make some noise. Freaking kudos, Casey. So I, I send him a message like a minute ago and I'm just like hey can I have a mission with magic and I become like a wizard <laughs> cleric multi-class and Casey's just like yeah bro, I'll hook you up <laughs> <laughs> oh, my really good really well that my friends good. is where we're gonna end the session this week what? <laughs> I know but a our health scene oh we'll do that at the top of next episode don't you uh, worry that's not okay. for another five years five. we record oh, these every oh, five oh, years <laughs> no. simultaneously we are outside of the time stream. <laughs> We're recording the first session today, too. We record too. these everywhere. In the farthest reaches of was. the spaghetti zone. <laughs> oh, gosh. We're back. <laughs> so, does anyone have anything they would like to plug? The spaghetti zone. Oh. Uh, go ahead and follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Majora's Rose, and on my social media at Majora's Rose or Majora's Rose TTV on Twitter because, man. Or at Rachel Cordell for my personal stuff. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, please, please, please check out the Adventure Jam games that I wrote for last month. Uh, there are two of them. Uh, you can find them on page T-I-N-T-E-N-S-E-H-E-R dot itch dot I-O. The first one is DOS Galaxy. It's this little command line prompt rogue-ish space adventure where you uh, go around a cool little procedural galaxy. And the other one is uh, Elsewhere Express, this adorable, beautiful game inspired by Spirited Away where you talk to strangers on a train and have a meaningful conversation with them, which has full professional a full professional voice cast um, that we got for free. So please, please, please check them both out. Share them around. Uh, leave us comments. 
Uh, I believe you can't rate them because they're part of the jam, but do leave us a comment and share them to your friends. Thank you so much. It would mean so much to us. Thanks. Go ahead and check out Clickety Clackety RTA on Twitch. That is where I stream uh, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, or well, where I'm a part of the campaign of Wild Beyond the Witchlight uh, as Clarence Clamwater, the Lokatha Barbarian. Um, we stream on Wednesday nights at, or every other Wednesday night at eight o'clock, that campaign, but they stream every Wednesday. They just do a different campaign on the other Wednesdays. Um, if you're in the New York area, you can also check out Wake Up Daisy, which is a modern retelling of uh, Sleeping Beauty that I voice acted for. It's a puppet show at the Swedish Cottage Marionette Theater in Central Park. So if you have a free weekend or a free day, it's like a 45 minute show. It's very, very quick, but it is a good show. And you get to hear my dulcet tones singing in that show. So Ooh. check it out. Mm. Yeah, Shout out to Sweden. It was good, donated good, by Sweden. So good country. Uh, good country. Yeah. Nice no cottages. Wi-Fi. What? Now they have what? Affordable, <laughs> affordable, affordable furniture. They have, they have better health care than us. What are you talking about? <laughs> no Wi Fi. It's crazy. They, they, they don't have Wi Fi in the health care plan. Only it's data. Oh, no no universal health care. No Wi Fi. That's the big trade off. That's the blue pill and red pill. <laughs> If, if you like this podcast, you could you could get an arm surgery. Move to Sweden. Move to get Sweden. an arm surgery, but no sick memes. <laughs> no five G over there. Uh. You know how people, rich uh, people in the states, will like fly their kids to uh, and family members to countries with socialized healthcare. Yeah, um, just to get it for free. Uh, do you think people in Sweden fly to America just to post on Reddit? <laughs> yeah. 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 VPNs no Mom, comments. I got to upload no, to my VPNs TikTok. Are the boring <laughs> All right, get on the plane, little JD. <laughs> I was completely derailed. Do you like this podcast? Leave a review. There you go. That was it. <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thanks for listening. <laughs> Anywho. Hi. Hi. Are we forgetting something? I don't, I don't know. Goodbye. Oh, there it is. Oh, it's so good to have you back. Yay. <laughs>